Really exciting day. Uh, we got JR's gun back from the gunsmith, and it's been a long time coming. So, JR, why was your gun at the gunsmith? That's a good question. That's why a was really your... good question. Yeah. Um, we needed to get it pinned and welded. Mm hmm. Which you want to describe what that process entails? Yeah. So, to be legal, your barrel has to be 16 inches. And from, from what I've always heard and what I know is, that means that the bolt is closed into the breech and you stick a tube down and if it gets to 16 inches, you're good. And so with JR's 13.7 inch barrel, you have to attach a muzzle brake, drill a hole through the muzzle brake and through the threads of the barrel, set a little uh, cylinder down there and then weld a cap on top so that you can't remove the muzzle brake. So that's some knowledge for people who don't know. And I guess, I can, I can piggyback on that. Rewind even more. Why did we need to get that done? Mm. Obviously for the legality, but partly was my, you know, wish to have this length mm -hmm. with a muzzle break. This is, this is maybe just a me thing. Maybe some of you it's out the there fashion, agree. Fashion's coming in. Yes, now. yes, the look. I wanted the muzzle break, the muzzle device to be flush mm -hmm. with the end of the rail. I didn't want... It to be rail, then some barrel showing, and then your muzzle device. Right. So, a little picky. Very, very picky. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> very picky, but, you know, that's been accomplished. Definitely. With, I mean, yeah. You walked in with it today, and I was like, I mean, I was like a kid in a candy store. That's like right. Willy Wonka. So, the 13.7 barrel, 13.7 inch barrel from Ballistics Advantage, and then the 13 inch rail from Cross Machine Tool. Mm -hmm. And then the folks over at Sons of Liberty Gunworks make a dead air compatible brake called the Knox NOX. I'm gonna walk this up here in a minute to the camera to show you how kind of flush the muzzle uh, device goes to the end of the rail. And I think part of it is that JR likes to look at that. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is that if you wanted to mount, you know, a dead air suppressor someday, or even for the time being, the dead air pyro, which is the, the very loud apparatus that goes on the front, kind of a, I think the common term now is a blast can or a blast shield, you know, that'll made up right towards to be flush with where the rail ends. You have the muzzle brake just peeking out of the end of the rail and the barrel at 13.7, plus you have to take into consideration some of the threads you know, bring that muzzle brake back to around 13 inches, which is the length of the rail. And to do that, you have to pin and weld. You can see the hole that was welded over so that now it's one piece. But, you know, maybe maybe for people who haven't seen the first two episodes, run down the parts that you're using uh, on this build. Yeah, so one thing about the Knox from Sons of Liberty, that wasn't my first choice for a muzzle device. I, I know, just wanted, wanted a big, chunky... I wanted a big, chunky shroud, and then... We've been talking with Sons of Liberty. I wonder why. Hmm. Don't know why, but we've been talking to that company lately. Maybe we have a project cooking up. But they sent some samples, and we unboxed the Knox. That rhymed. And I was like, oh, that's going on the build. Right? Yeah. And your, your mouth dropped. You're like, what the heck? We just went through this whole process of yeah. doing and how we need the length. But it all worked out in the end. I just was like, that's, that's what I want on the end of the gun. Well, and, you know, part of it is because if you've looked over the past 10 or so years where a lot of other aftermarket companies have come out with parts for building AR-15s, there's so much more, there's so many more options out there, so much more you can do with your gun. And there was a, you know, maybe a look back in the day where people were putting, you know, blast cans underneath the Seekins rail and then everyone's... Tucked. Tucked it was a word that was thrown out. Now rails have a smaller profile. In the uh, advent of first, it was uh, key mod, and then that run never really took off. So now M lock is kind of the industry standard so that people make accessories for the exact size of holes that are on um, the rail. People are going to slimmer rails, and so you can't really put anything underneath most of these. Maybe like a Caw, uh, Caw Valley, Caw Precision, Caw, K-A-W? Caw. Caw, yeah, they make a uh, like a linear compensator that's kind of chunky that might fit under there, but not a lot of other things will fit underneath there. So I knew that JR, you know, this being his first AR-15, was really excited to, 
you know, dream it up and use the influences that he's seen um, on some of the wildest builds, you know, out there. And initially wanted to do like a blast shield of some sort. And I, my jaw did drop when he said, you know what? I want something clean. And then that's when I was like, you know, bonus, it'll be perfect for a suppressor when that time comes. Or even, you know, Dead Air does make the pyro, which is like a little mini blast blast shield that goes on the end. You know, the Nox is known for getting a 13.7 to over 16 inches right. without having that kind of, oh, is it there, is it not there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a surefire way to get over 16, and we've gauged it, and it's like 16.2 inches. It's perfect because all barrels are different where the threads are cut, so you got to make sure you get there. Uh, tell everybody else about the rest of your upper. Yeah, I, I want to say that the cross machine tool rail, the DRT, this color, this was probably the first item that I was just like, that's a yes. Yeah. So I think it's fair to say the entire build is built around this rail. Yeah, yeah that's right. Traditionally, when you do a build, what would be the first thing? Would would a rail be a place to start? It's where I started, essentially. Yeah, but I, mean, I don't know if that's normal or not. Well, from a, from a form and a, a, a grip, and even a, a fashion or, yeah. or the way that it looks and or feels. Um, it's, it's, you know, you kind of idealize it in your head. I think for me, I've always started with uh, the end goal. So I've always started and said, okay, this is gonna be a long range gun. This is gonna be something short and compact. And then, so the first decision for me has always been barrel length. Okay. But with that being said, we had a slew of barrels to choose from, so I can understand. I think the, the truth is, and maybe we don't want to admit it, but the anodized FDE Coyote stuff that's out there, like the DRT from Cross Machine Tool and other things like DDC from Geisley, I think everyone really likes that that color and they like yeah. the look of that. And so you can really build around that. But yeah, I mean, I, I think I've always started with barrel length and then you know that was a calculation of what I wanted to use the gun for. Um, and then just kind of gone from there. And, you know, for me, it's always been, if it's tan, put it on there. I don't care what shade, what color it is. 50 Shades of FDE, yeah. shout out. Um, but yeah. That rubbed off on me, your influence of FDE. Then I was just like, oh yeah, that's cool. That's cooler than black. Black's cool, don't get me wrong. There's gonna be some black on this gun. But speaking of FDE, went with the Emissary Development yeah. foregrip, which this, this little bad boy, if you have a, if you have social media, Instagram, these guys have done a great like guerrilla marketing campaign. They're on like everyone's page. Like I've yeah. seen them on Noveski's page. I've seen them on, you know, um, Sons of Liberty's page. Like I, it must have just been a little guerrilla tactic. They sent samples to everyone and yeah. then everyone's like, this is cool as hell. Long story short, I saw this everywhere on Instagram. I said, Bob, what is this? You were even like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it, it, you know, I'd seen it on a few. That's so true. I, I'd seen it on a few guns, but I didn't know what it was because yeah. I feel like a new foregrip comes out every other day. But then I kept seeing the same one with the grip texture and this kind of mm -hmm. swooping forward um, bang, if you will. Yeah. And then I started seeing it. One, one, I think you saw it first. And I was like, what is this thing? Saw it a lot on uh, SLR builds. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, yeah, those, that's right. Yep. We were looking yep. at those SLR, SLR uh, like, influence and, mm -hmm. and inspiration and stuff like that. Yeah, and it's cool. It fits my Jack Skellington long skinny fingers really well. Just feels good. Yeah, and the grip texture on it is yeah. incredible. Yep. So Emissary has done a great job of providing excellent grip texture, and I think that's what's really taking over with the folks out there that are big fans of it. Obviously, it wraps around the whole, um, the sides and the front. And it's it's not small. I think it's yeah. it's they actually do make a they make a small shorter size. K version, but Jer wanted to go with this. And I, I think just the idea of creating reflex and memory and you know how you approach and grip and grab your rifle, I think this will be a really nice addition to creating that kind of reflex and muscle memory. Yeah. So went with the emissary. If you got one of our Christmas boxes, you're gonna get real up close and personal with some emissary. Just throwing that out there. Um, moving along, Novesky Upper. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. That was your first choice. That was my first choice. It's you, the first choice. It's the last choice. I think he named that. You know, for being, and don't you know, don't take this the wrong way. We all started somewhere, but for being a novice with the actual parts, like you can point to a gun and say, "I really like the way it looks. Yeah. It looks like a functional. Yeah. You know, it looks like it was well built and stuff like that." But I, I think you named this by name, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. know, Novesky has done a great job 
um, RIP John Noveski, but they've done a great job over the years uh, creating really quality, tight, to- tight tolerance products to the point where getting that barrel in there <laughs> and then test fitting other barrels to like test rails and so on and so forth, it is the tightest uh, upper receiver that we've ever worked on here. Mm. I mean, literally taking a rubber mallet to pound it in and pound it out. Um, the incredible, incredibly tight tolerances, uh, which, a- which aids in the precision of the gun. And I got some serious, uh, some clout points when I went to the shop to pick this up. Everyone's like, you're the guy that got this? Like when this came in, yeah. we were all like, oh man, whoever got this like really knows their stuff. And I'm like, oh yeah. I'm, That's me. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. JR the Builder. Now, again, um, huge influence by you. You know, you, you've steered me towards these brands and these things. And Noveski, you've always been a fan of. And yeah, they make they make great stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, along. Why don't you talk about the the heart of your gun, the bolt carrier? Gun. Yeah, yeah. Um, bolt carrier went with the the silver. What's the technical term? For nickel that? boron. Yeah, so. nickel boron. Yeah. Um, Went with that. I know gold is kind of Bob's thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of started off with thinking that, but then I just wanted to do something a little different, you know? So I went with the nickel boron, and this is from Premier Manufacturing, um, a very cool up-and-coming machine shop out of Florida. But yeah, we, uh, we got some projects in the works for them, and they're on, they're on the JR build. And... The dust cover, Ew. which this thing, surprise, surprise, from Timber Creek. Um, which, what, what line is this from? The, the Timber Creek? It might be the Gray Man, but it's their billet dust cover. Yeah, so it's billet, made of aluminum. And it is just like a tough cookie on there, man. And it is just like stout, good little design. Now, so we're looking at some of the small parts here. And, oh, there it is. I keep on doing that. Uh, JR went with the Radian. Yeah. Why? Because it's Radian. <laughs> um, uh, if you've been a subscriber with us for a while now, you got this exact charging handle in your plus box, and for good reason. You know, Radian is kind of the gold standard when it comes to the charging handle, the Raptor. It's just, I mean, look at that. It's, Have we smashed one with the anvil yet? Um, no. I think we need to put one of those under the anvil and... Let it go. I bet it won't smash because it's radium. It's it's a tough. Mm, tough I think you piece. could bend. I think you could bend some of those aluminum walls on any charging <laughs> handle. But yeah, really excited to have the radium on there. Um, love the Raptor. We got great feedback from our Plus subscribers who yeah. received the Raptor. Everyone was like, "Holy crap! You put a Raptor in in the box." So this is what we do here. We got to work uh, work for a while to get that deal together, but we're really excited yeah. and there'll be more radiant things yeah, coming absolutely. in the future. Now, here's the thing. Do we do we do we ooh, ooh, do we talk about optics yet? Do we save that? We we have dabbled in it. Even in the last video we talked about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, a final decision has been made on optic. Wow. Um, it is here. <sighs> we can talk about it. Okay. I'm going to mount it up. Look how easy that looks. Yep. Heck yeah. American Defense Manufacturing. Again, tan, there's a theme here. <laughs> JR likes tan anodized parts. Yeah. That's the theme. And then uh, talk about the optic. Swamp Fox. Um, release the Kraken, you know? <laughs> release the Kraken. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah, we went through quite a few optics. And we've sent some Swamp Fox in Glock boxes yeah, that's right. and the Tac Pack Plus, and we have a great relationship with Swamp Fox. But all that to the side, the optic is just stellar on its own merit. Um, so yeah, I went with it. Just a nice kind of. Would you consider this a micro? Yeah, I mean it, it's in that it's in that uh, micro yeah. mini mini micro. Yeah, I mean you know. I guess Aimpoint calls theirs a micro. Other people call this like a mini. Yeah. Here's a close-up of the Swamp Fox Kraken. Oh, flip it over. On JR's build. And 
you know, he wanted something that would be really good platform, especially to start out on. And the folks over at Swamp Fox are really great. And so that's what it came down to. He saw it. He wanted it. He saw the mount. He wanted it. I want the mount, like, immediately. The build is getting there. You know, one thing about when you plan out your build is the time it takes to take it to a gunsmith and do things like pinning and welding. That was about a six-week process from start to finish with a local gunsmith here. And so we haven't shot a video about the build in that period of time. And by the time this airs, it'll probably be, you know, seven or eight weeks from the last time uh, the other, the part two had aired. Mm -hmm. So think about that when you're planning out your build, especially if you have to get things smithed and worked on. But uh, I think they did a really great job. And, you know, it's interesting about this break, and I, I'll show this one more time. I've seen a lot of breaks that have like these mini portholes on one side. The Knox has them on two sides that are next to each other. So two of the four sides are covered in these ports right here. And so we clocked this at uh, 10 and two, you know, just to be a very linear up and down recoil suppressant. But there are other ways to configure this to actually fight against how the gun moves when, uh, you know, the, the case ejects. I'm really excited about the way JR's build is going. What I'm even more excited about is to get it complete and then hit the range test firing, and then more importantly, you know, once you get your gun out there and you shoot it and you kind of realize it with you, then you're going to want to make changes. Sure. So that's going to be a journey too, is sure. to see how that changes over time. And then even to go to like, say, carbine classes, like there'll be other videos about how does he set up his sling? What kind of sling does he choose? What kind of belt system does he have? How does he configure his magazines and stuff like that? So there's going to be more and more. We originally thought this was going to be like a four or five part series. It could be a little bit longer, um, but the build's coming along great, and I'm I'm really happy for you. I think this looks awesome. Yeah, I I couldn't be more uh, appreciative of this opportunity. Um, it's been it's been awesome. When you pitched the idea, I was like, yes, that's insane. Thank you so much. Um, as he said, the waiting has been the hardest part, <laughs> Tom Petty. Um, <laughs> Yes, there is a lot of time that goes into waiting on things to show up to the shops, on parts to get delivered, on the, the, the smithing that had to be done with the pin and welding. I haven't felt this type of anticipation since I was a young boy in the mid-90s waiting for the Nintendo 64 to be under the Christmas tree. Were you a Virtua Racer kind of guy or a Star Fox kind of guy? So I was. Uh, so the initial batch was Super Mario 64, Wave Race 64, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. It was the best Christmas ever. But... Wow. Was that, Wave Race the one where you could, like, go into the water? Yeah. Yeah, all you, right. you could You could submerge for a little bit. Yes. Uh, we should get it. We should get an N64, we should get an N64 in here. Yeah. Stop the film. <laughs> cut tape. We've got a new objective for today. <laughs> new video series. Smash each other in N64. <laughs> but yeah, that energy that I haven't felt in so long, it's been reignited with this build and this series. And it's all things to the bottom here. And it's been a hoot. So yeah, this is part three. Part four is coming soon. We'll have links to part one and two up here down the description so you can follow along on the journey. Share your journey in the comments yeah. below. I mean, everyone has their own story about their own build, their own first build, the decisions they made, the changes they had to make, yeah. you know, once they, like you said, got out and shot the thing. So, exciting. Yeah, stay tuned for the next series. We're gonna film in a couple of weeks. Yep. Talk, Talk soon. soon. Yeah, we should get an Nintendo 64. <laughs> Why? You want to get you want to get smoked? <laughs> yeah, right. You want to get smoked in some Mario Kart? What was the F Zero? Was that yeah, Nintendo? Yeah, that's Nintendo. Yeah. F Zero was the jingle, like a million miles an hour yeah. off the jumps yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah,